What up, what up, Wimbush here. And earlier this year, I was at the GDC conference up there in North California, and I went to the Epic Games booth, in which front and center, they had the Lego version of the llama, in which they were also passing out miniature versions of the llama, in which I put together here. So what I thought could be neat is if I took the Lego llama and I took the Creality Raptor and scanned it so that I could bring this into Lego Fortnite to have as a collectible object. So before I do that, of course, I had to put together the Lego Llama piece by piece because they just gave it to us in little baggies, but it only took a few minutes to put together. And then from there, I'm just going to get scanning using the Creality Raptor. Now, if you watched my previous video, you noticed that now we have access to a blue light that's going to give us more precise scans. And so what I did in this case was I scanned it at the top from the side and at the bottom because this particular item is a little bit tricky. So I just wanted to make sure I had good scans at all angles. And so you'll notice that instead of having it just on an automatic rotating table, I put it on this table that I got off of Amazon that I could rotate it myself using my own hands and that way I don't have to worry about it being rushed and losing the tracks or anything because whenever you're using the blue light those dots that I have on the table those ones came with the Creality Raptor and those are made specifically to react with the blue light so you'll notice as I'm scanning it through how you actually see the reflections of those dots on the tray there those are telling it that these points right here are beaming back to the Creality Raptor so it knows in 3D space where everything's supposed to be at. And so that really helped because I didn't want to put dots all over my item there. Like that is a choice, but I didn't want to have to paint that out later. So just having it right there on the tray really helped out a lot. And since these are Legos, they are pretty shiny there. So I was a little bit worried if I was going to be able to pick it up. But it looks like from what I'm seeing here inside the viewport, it's picking up everything pretty well. So once I was done scanning all the sides, because I did that behind me on my laptop, just so I could get a little bit better with my lighting situation. And so when I'm bringing it together, I like doing it on my desktop because my desktop is more powerful than my laptop. So inside the Creality software, we can merge them all together. The way that I like to do it is try doing an auto merge first, but a lot of times it's not going to come through exact. So we manually have to do it, which is pretty simple in itself. So you just want to select one of the scans and then you want to select one of the other scans. And then you're just going to start placing dots on there, telling it what part references what. So if I start clicking on my scene there, you can see first we have the red dot and then it's going to turn green. And you just want to make sure that they coincide with each other because this is basically telling the program that whenever you bring these two shells together, match them exactly to these points. So I did this for the second and third scan first, just to bring that together. And then once I merged it together, these are the results that I got. And then from there, I just take that merged results and I put it together with my first scan. So going through the same exact process, I'm putting dots all over the scan there and I'm just going to merge it together until I get my final result. So this is what the final result looks like inside a Creality scan. It's not bad. I could use some touch up there and I'm going to bring it into Cinema 4D just so I can delete some of these faces on here and kind of smooth this out a little bit. But if I come over and just add the color mapping to it, you can see it picked up on the color map pretty decent there. Like if I wanted to bring it into Substance Designer or something just to clean it up a lot more, definitely have that flexibility there. But since I'm bringing this into the game as a small collectible, we're not going to be seeing it super large. So I'm not worried about the texture so much because basically inside the game, it's going to be about that big. And once we're inside a Cinema 4D, this is what it's going to look like. So if I select it over here in my objects panel, you'll notice right off the bat that it's not in the center of its axis. So what I like to do is come over here to tools, come down here to where it says axis, and then we're going to hit axis center. Then I'm going to put it right here, just select all of these, hit execute. And now you can see that the axis is at the center of my object. So I'm going to come back out here, come down here inside of my coordinates, and I'm just going to zero everything out. Then I'm going to hit the H key on my keyboard to bring us into the middle of our viewport. Now, even though the axis is in the center of our object here, you'll notice that our object, for whatever reason, is always going to come in off centered. I just notice this every time I do a scan, but it's easy to fix. So I'm going to come over here to my quads and in each one of these quads, I'm going to hit H to bring our mesh directly into the center. And then I'm going to select it again and I'm going to come down here to rotate. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it until it looks about right. So you're just eyeballing it right now. And if I try to move it up here, you'll notice that we're moving in a weird orbital motion. So I'm going to hit control Z and I'm going to come over here under axis. I'm going to come to where it says gimbling rotation, select this. And now you'll notice that our rotation bar moved and we could come through here and just easily start to move this back into place. 
So once you're happy with how everything is centered, I'm going to come back in here to my perspective view. Then we're going to come up here to extensions and I have this plugin called drop the floor. It's free. And all it does is put it onto the floor of your 3D plane. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this right here. So I'm in my selection mode and then I could come through and start deleting some of these extra vertices and polygons out. So we do want to do some cleanup here inside of cinema. So you notice that we have these extra polygons here. Just make this a little bit bigger so we can select more at once. And right here where it says visible only, I'm going to select that off so that we're selecting all the polygons in here. And we're just going to delete these all manually. Then hit delete. And now we deleted those polygons that we didn't want on our mesh. So we just go through and clean up our mesh that way. Now let's say that you happily cleaned up your mesh there. You want to smooth it out here a little bit. You can come up here into the sculpt tools. Then come over here on the left hand side. We have smooth. Make sure you have it selected. And then you can just come through and start smoothing this out. So you could do this for the entire model on there and you'll just smooth out your model so we don't have this extra clumps on there. Now, if you have a program like ZBrush, it might be better to do it in there. But since we're already inside of cinema, I'm just going to smooth it out here as much as I can. And once you're happy with how you smooth everything out, the next step from here is to bring it in the UEFN. But before I did that, I exported it out as an FBX and that way I can bring it into UEFN and put it inside of our game. So now we're inside of UEFN and we're using the Lego template to get started. So with UEFN open, I've made a folder down here just called Llama. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to click and drag my FBX into there. And once you do, you're going to come up with the FBX import options, which I'm just going to put everything at default and just import it. And once you do, now we're good to go. So we have our 3D model, we have our texture and our material, which is all imported. So now what I want to do is I want to make this a collectible for inside of our game, in which I have some collectible objects already inside the game here. So if I double click on it, you can see right now, this is where one of the collectibles are. And instead of using a Fortnite coin here, I want to use our llama that we scanned in using the Creality Raptor. So I'm going to select all my collectible objects on here. I only have about five. And then over here under user options down here where it says custom mesh, I'm going to left click on this. And that way I can drag and drop the 3D model right into there. So now you see we have the 3D scan model right into our scene here. And we can even add some custom effects for whenever you collect it. So over here, where it says custom VFX, I'm going to select this right here. And let's just say we want like a gas explosion or something to happen. Actually, let me see what else we have down here. So this spawn effect could be cool. It has some stars in the cloud. So I'm going to select that. So whenever we collect this within our game, we're going to get this cool effect. So now all we have to do now is launch the game and get playing. So now we're in the game. I got my Ninja Turtle in here. And we're just going to look for the collectible that we scanned in. So I'm going to jump over here inside of our island and let's see where we go we can come up these steps here first and this is just the lego obstacle course that we put our item into so i can see a llama over there dang i suck already let me give us one more go come over here climb up this ladder climb over here just take my time with it so these obstacle courses could be kind of crazy but Okay, so we come over here. Now we see we have the Lego Llama right here inside of the game. So it's the same exact Llama that I scanned in from right here, which is wild. So we can actually scan objects from the real world and put it inside of our games to play. So let's keep going. I'm going to collect this right here. We got one gold coin, or not gold coin, but a Llama. I should have changed out the names up there to say Llamas, but all good. So I'm just going to keep going. And for anybody that's never made a game before, I would suggest trying out UEFN. Like I literally just created a game with Method Man from the Wu-Tang Clan called Battle for New York City. You can play it right now inside of Fortnite, but it was pretty easy to make. Like I didn't have to do any coding or anything using the same exact methods that I used here. You can check out that video because using a 3D scanner from Creality, I went through, scanned myself and actually put myself into the game. So a lot of this 3D scanning stuff has gone really far to where we could do a lot of really cool stuff with it. So moving over some more. Now we see we have the llama collectible right inside there. I'm going to collect that one. And I think I'm going to end it there. But you can see right off the bat how we can bring in some real world items into anything that we're working on inside of 3D using a hardware scanner like the Creality Raptor. So once again, I want to thank Creality for sending this out for me to check out because I think this is a good scanner. And even if you wanted a more budget friendly one, they have the Ferret Pro, which I did a video on that one as well. So definitely check out the products if you get the chance. So hopefully this video was fun for you guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, stay fresh. Keep creating and I catch you in the next video. I see you soon. Take care.